Greetings from the tourist capital, Zambia. My name is Memory Buku on Family Affairs. Now, a family is a unit whose genesis is marriage, where a new couple is taught the importance of family, taught how to value family by marriage counselors. But how organized and how much do these marriage counselors value their own families? We'll be finding out in the following conversation. Come with me. I'd like to welcome you and the viewers to the Yombwe family. Uh, the Yombwe family is a very big family, but um, our nuclear children are only two. So right now we are a family of four, but if you come on a Saturday, we have other children that we mentor, so it's a very big family. So you are most welcome. Okay, um, we're happy to be here and thank you so much for opening the doors to your home to come and get uh, learn more about uh, the Yombe family. We'll start with you Mrs. Yombe, tell us about yourself, give us your background, where did you grow up? Thank you Memory, um, very humble beginnings, yes I grew up in Lusaka in Livala stage 3, my parents are still there, my mom she was a uh, you know, like uh, uh, just taking care of the family. Then my dad worked as a veterinary officer. So, yes, we were actually from that family, we were actually 10 children together with mom and dad. But uh, our doors were always wide. We had a three bedroom house. You won't believe we'd sleep under the table, would shift. We always had a lot of traffic, you know. So, my parents embraced everybody, you know, like would have like family meetings just to discuss how you respect people when a visitor comes they would uh, like sit you down and introduce you this is your uncle this is your so and so and uh, even when you go to church sometimes you come then you say okay bring your bible what did you learn at church you know so that's the kind of uh, background that we grew up on and it's very very strict <coughs> Okay, uh, Mr. Yombe, let's get to hear about your own family, your own background, what kind yeah. of family did you grow up in? Yeah, um, uh, similar to hers, but um, I was born in, um, in Kalulushi uh, about uh, 62 years ago, and um, also a um, humble family. My uh, father is late now, um, used to work on the mines, and at some point he retired and we went to home, which is Kasama. And there, um, you won't believe it, half of the family um, just went down or, you know, <laughs> died. And I had to move from there. When my sister um, got married on the copper belt, I came to Ndola and staying there. And it was not easy, but uh, very big. And we had, um, you know, staying with cousins, my other brothers, the, 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 the man also where my, my sister married and also a family, so a very small house, you find that you are about 15 of you. <laughs> so from what uh, both of you have said, um, it gives me the impression that you grew up, you know, um, in extended, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, setup, yes. you know, um, has it in any way impacted on, you know, the parents that you are, your own family, has it impacted on, you know, how you raise your children and what other values did you learn from your parents that you are inculcating in your children? Um, from the way we are living, you know, from what we learned from our parents, you find that even when we're just the two of us, it feels there's something wrong. Huh? So we are embracing anybody that comes, yeah, the, the other children as well. We, we love to have children around us. So that actually really impacted. It doesn't feel okay just to be, you know, yeah. the two of us. It's like something is wrong. Yes. <laughs> your marriage counselor. Just you come your marriage counselor, and they say uh, when you get married, they advise the couple to stay the two of them before you, you know, bring in other people. Is, is that right? I think um, it depends. We actually had somebody like three months. It was it two before we started. 
like keeping someone just after we got married. Yeah, yeah we didn't yeah. take long. So yeah. I think these things depend on your, you know, your setup. It depends on how you communicate to each other. Because sometimes you might find you are living alone, already you have dependents. You know, so the most important thing, you know, for a marriage is communication. So when you meet, you agree. You know, you can even give yourself that, okay, maybe this year we don't want to stay with anybody. But there are situations, memory, you just immediately. Sometimes you find you stay with your in-laws. Maybe that's the situation you found yourself in. Um, one of the uh, things that I learned was um, sharing. That uh, you know, we the members say um, or something like, like that. Anything that you have, try to share with the, you know those around you. And you know, um, with the situation I see around of um, street kids, that is an Zambian or an African. Um, there's a lot of space, and these are things that we can accommodate in our in our houses. And uh, I, it's just very strange, you know, lifestyles have changed, but, you know, sharing whatever little that you have is very, very important in, in, in life. Respect for the, you know, for, for the elders, how you address the elders is very important. And when it comes to, like, you, you meet your um, would-be uh, wife, I think going through the processes, you know, it's very, very important at every stage that you go through the, the process properly where you go meet the you know, the, the parents or know the, that family where you are, you are going to, to get married to. And you, you know, you, you go through the right channel, find those who, are, who have been married before, they go and stand on your behalf, they go between, and so on. You follow all the processes, very, very important. And you know, with us, as a African, in our African culture, the marriage is not just about uh, two people. You know, it's wider, and so like uh, one of my artworks you will see there, it, it talks about a not for good, and, and so on, that once you get married, you know, it's, 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 it's for good, it's not for playing, or you, you try to, to, to test the waters before, no, that's not uh, the way it is. And you can live with someone, if you, if you follow what you are being advised by the, the, the elders. Okay, yeah. I'm talking about meeting someone, let's mm -hmm. get to here about your love story how did you meet mrs yombe <laughs> <laughs> and what makes her stand out you know <laughs> that's the one that i share very proudly <laughs> because you know as an artist when i was you know growing up i was so much involved in my work and i never thought i would get married mm -hmm. but at some point something just started feeling not right you know so i had to meet somebody but because i i loved my work so much and and, and i didn't want to have a someone who I would live, spend my life with, who does not appreciate my, my kind of life and so on. So my idea was to go to Ivarin Horn because Ivarin Horn is the only college or school that offers art. So I went and my, my, my missions were two, to, to further my academic qualifications and also to meet my, my lifetime partner. And that's where I met her. And you know, when I when I went there, I I was not shy about it. I had some friends already, and there were some of them were teachers, and so I was already an established artist. And some people were thinking, what are you going to learn from there? But I knew that, you know, I, I was missing something, especially because the the course I went to do was a teaching course, so it was psychology and all that. So I needed I needed all that. So they were telling me that I, I don't think you can find somebody here, you know, all these, you know, there's nobody you can find. And I was joking to my friends that, no, I will definitely do. And it, it didn't take me long from that time. I think within a year I'd spotted something and okay. I went for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm sure it was within, it was under six months from the time. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was so very creative yeah. in the way he made the approach, you know. So, because when he came, I actually said, Do you know, I was alone in a class of 15 guys. So I told them I was not going to go out with the, anybody from the college. So when he came, the story changed. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. 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 What it means is she was already in the second year. Yeah. yeah. And I came in as a first year. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so she was. Yeah. But she was in the same class. No. No, she was ahead of me. I was ahead of oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you were very good with someone who was behind. Yeah. Wow. Nice. So he changed the story. You know, in his creative ways, the way he did his his ball game. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't like love at first sight. 
it's something that I actually said, I think, let me see if that is the kind of, you know, person I would love to. So it took us time, not just dating, knowing each other, about six months or so. And so Embe has told us that for him, he had already made up his mind. She was going to college to meet that special someone. What about you? What made you change your mind, you know, about um, uh, marriage, you know, um, dating a man from, you know, within college? What made him stand out? Like, what made you say yes? Okay, I already had my own uh, standards, like what I wanted. One of the things is I didn't want anybody who took, you know, like alcohol. I didn't want anyone that smoked. And then I also wanted somebody who would be there, you know, and inspired from my dad who would knock off 16 hours, he's home and he's checking your books and all that. So I was like, I think, you know, this is, uh, you know, somebody that, yeah, maybe we could be together. Mr. Yeah. how would you describe your family? How would you describe your children? How would you describe your wife? What kind of a family do you have here? You know, I structured my life around art. Mm -hmm. So I met my, like God sent, you know, her in art and so far. I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I appreciate about uh, is that from the word go, I told her that uh, could we agree that we don't have of our own children, not to have so many of them, maybe the highest should be two, because I knew the background where I come from, I had, the, you know, some of the people that I was already looking up to, so I was already in a, a bigger family, so I said, could we reduce, and she had agreed, so that was a, a, a good a plus for, you know, for me as a, as a starting point or an arrangement. And I, I get a lot of uh, cooperation from, from her, and also we, we tried to, um, bring up our children in a manner that is acceptable to, to society. But you, you're not children. But we get a, a lot of good feedback from, from people about the children. Although we don't see it ourselves, but a good number of people, a good number of people <laughs> mm -hmm. say your children are good and, and so oh. on. Yeah. My, my career is not easy, so you need to be to surround yourself with people who understand. And that way you, you'll be able to carry on with, um, with this kind of creative work. Okay, according yeah. to you, why is that important to you? Why is it important for you to have the support of your family? You know, um, parents, um, the first example to this child is before society and so on. So they, they need to be uh, good examples or good uh, picture to, to, this, to, to this child. And uh, the child needs all the confidence that he needs to carry on in anything that, that they that, that, that they that he needs. Can I add on something a little bit? Um, like the way he's doing, the way we are doing art. Uh, art is a very, very difficult career. You know, it needs time. So in other words, we even say it's uh, jealousy. There are times when you don't have money. So if your wife and your children, they don't know what you're doing, they're bound to be problems. So it's very important. Like for example, if he sells a painting, we all are so excited, okay, he sold or I've sold. Then if we don't know that, okay, after you've bought that, uh, you've sold, you need to invest it back. So you have to buy maybe materials, paints, and they don't come cheap, yeah? So if you have the support network of your family, you enjoy doing your work, and like when you hide, then you are going to have challenges. Even your own relatives will think, oh, that person has a lot of money, they are not helping, but they might not know that. It's the only sale that you've made, maybe a big one, in the whole year. Would I be right to say this is a family business? You have a family business. Yes, we do. Yes, it is. This yeah. business as a family. Yes. How yeah. easy has it been? What challenges do you face? You know, uh, some people are scared to do business. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know I'll tell you, yeah, um, it's not easy. Because sometimes um, when you don't cooperate, you know, it will be very difficult. And when you don't separate, you know, domestic and mm -hmm. business, that one also becomes a problem. So communication is very important, knowing the boundaries. That yeah. this uh, is to do with business. Now this is family. You know, if yeah. you like, maybe you have a difference with your friend domestically. <laughs> Business-wise, if you didn't differ, <laughs> then you know, you must start a first. If you differed with, from the business point of view, the domestic one, it should not go into the domestic one. So but it's, it's not tough. very easy. You must understand that one. It's a, it's a tough one. Very few people, uh, you, know, um, you know, make it. And for me, from a long time ago, I wanted to succeed. I wanted to try to attempt this work with somebody and so on. I 
think if you go around, you may find that may, we may be the only ones who behave in this manner, all work together <laughs> in this field, and so on. So, we, 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 you know, it's, it's something that you have to work on every day. It's not a one, a one day thing or one part we should do more than the other one. It's not easy, but uh, if your mentality, if your thinking is such that you must succeed together, you find that you will overcome. Just like, you know, in where we are, there is this structure which is showing, uh, which is showing this, this one encourages people to, you know, to work together that you, no matter what, what may come, please um, persevere. persevere. Did you first act on your children? Is it a natural passion for them or did you force, force it on them? No, um, I will tell you what. <clears throat> Maybe she did, I don't know. But I'll tell you, my daughter came to me three times when she mentioned that she, after finishing grade 12, and uh, we said, because some subjects were not so good, so we had asked her to improve on it, after improving on it, and we said, what is it that you are going to do, and so on. So while she was in that, I told her that, can you, to, because I know how difficult it is to, to follow up on, on art. There are two ways. This one, as a teacher, I'll tell you that it's 99% you know, um, hard work. But from the artist's point, I'll tell you that you must be gifted and so on. So I didn't want to interfere. So she came to me three times. That's when I said, oh, maybe she's serious. And that, you know, I'd like to go and do this and so on and, and, and so forth. That's when I started, oh, okay, maybe let's find out what is going on at Ivan and on and so on. So that's how I accept it. But otherwise, it's not something that we, we you know, we forced on no, without you know, It's not easy, this kind of Then we have also you. our yeah. son who is also doing uh, photography. Yeah. That one even started when he was in school, using, you know, like he had this page, taking photos of cars and all those things. Yeah. So he does his own thing. He's not even here. He's in Lusaka. He's doing his own thing. So we didn't force it either. Yeah. Then we have the other children that we have. Like one of them just came on our own and said, please, can I learn art from you quickly? You know, so that quickly, this is almost five years, we are still with her, and we are yeah, still, she went you know, yes, then I had the son, you know, so back, yeah. it's art is something that you can force. Yeah. Yes. How long have you been married again? Uh, this should be 2091. It's 27. No, 20, yeah. 1991. So this is like uh, 27 years yeah. now. 27 years. Mm -hmm. to, together, still yeah. growing stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the secret? How, knowing that you're from different backgrounds and um, you don't entertain, you know, um, the idea of divorce. Why is it important for couples you know, to resolve their differences? Um, uh, like for me, I'll talk from for myself. Uh, after undergoing the, this initiation, today I don't know whether my mother knew what it was going, the impact that it was going to have, especially on my career. But what I've seen here, there is nothing that encourages me to abuse her. And uh, I think that encourages her to abuse me. And I've heard of people saying, uh, ah, no, Shipikisha club. And so, it's misunderstanding. What this emphasizes when they say Shipikisha? It means like uh, endurance, like, you know, where there are certain things that you should not make a decision hastily and so on. You need to consult her. And sometimes it, it feels like, you know, you are wasting time and, and so on. But that's how, you know, when it, there are two people, you need to, to communicate and all that. So it's about communication, listening to one another. For example, you know, this one. This one is called Mundu, the lion. You know, it makes this, this, this sound, you know, like a, like a lion. But what actually this one encourages is that uh, I should respect, when she's talking, I must keep quiet. And when I'm talking, she must keep quiet so that I can listen and be able to, to say, what is she trying to, to talk about, you know? So one thing at a time, okay? You know, I listen to her and what, so that way you understand, so that when I'm trying to, to, to give my view, it will be from not only my view, also from her point of view as well, because I will have been in, somehow in her position. It's not very easy for people to, but also because we also underwent the Christian counseling as well. Mm -hmm. So all that, it, it reminds us to, you know, to, to, to stick together and so, but the issues of communication, very important, supporting one another, like, like this is structure that you are seeing here. Mrs. Yongwe, you as a woman, um, what is your role in, in marriage and what is the role of um, a woman out there, you know, in ensuring that a marriage lasts? 
ensuring that you know even when we differ on certain things we do not resort to divorce yeah so the woman actually does a lot of things in the house eh? you ensure that everything is okay you know there's the kitchen part there's making sure people you know have eaten taking care of the children and even when um things are not well you know this part that he has shown which is mundu there's a way in which you have to communicate, huh? not to publish to everybody in the world that this situation is uh, not okay. I'm actually very lucky, very, very lucky and blessed to have him as my partner because, uh, he under yes, as my, yes, as my husband. <laughs> so, because he understands, okay? You know, like on, in that uh, war thing, there's actually, you've seen the black, red, white, this last section here. He talks about a woman, the whole like the whole month and all those things. So he understands me really well, and in my art, he also understands really well that sometimes I wake up, I don't know what I'm doing. I just come up with things out of the blues, and he's there to support even when I need materials. You know, he understands. Why marriage counseling, and when you you know um, interact with these um, new couples, do you tell them about the importance of? Family. You know, um, stages in the growth of a human being from childhood and so on, you know, there's this transition. Our people from a long time understood how vulnerable one can be when they are moving from one state to, to the other. So um, when, you, like maybe um, people are going to come together, they don't know. If you look at that painting there, you see there is a woman and also there is a man that side where you see the makeup of a person. When somebody is dressed like this, you don't know how they are and so on. So you need to understand because there may be some certain things that you may not like about, about a certain individual. So you, a person needs to be counseled or needs to be talked to that. This is, there are things that you can change about a person and things that you cannot change. And if you are going to live up with that person, for things that you cannot change, yeah. and you've said for better, for worse, what are you going to do if you have not undergone some counseling of some kind. You may find that, you know, you take it like a joke. Um, how important is family? Is family important to you? Yes, family is very important because it's a single unit, you know, that brings, you know, the nuclear, you know. You look at the past, you look at the present, and you know there's the future. You know, when we were raising the children, we, we, we know all their weaknesses. They are vulnerable. You know, there are so many things that happen within that family setup. You know, so a family plays a very important role. Yeah. You know, can you think of society without without a family? You know, society. That's where you know it it, it begins from. And if things that we've talked about, which are important, are not inculcated in in, in the family or in the children, you find that you know even society will get that drunkard. You know feel uh, out, of, out of this uh, world and so on. So it's very, very important that uh, we, 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 the family is um, structured well and so on, yeah. Um, my name is Sunga, Sunga Mira, and they are my kind. Um, my name is Yande, and they are my parents. Kangwa Yongo is my name. How would you describe them? How would you describe your parents? I'd say they are loving parents, the people who are always willing to listen. They are not just our parents, but they are like our friends, because we are able to talk to them, to joke with them. We're not, they haven't created a situation where we are too afraid to share anything with them. Well, I would say they are, they are like mentors, you know, aside from just being parents and like mentors. Um, <clears throat> there are people that are so much concerned about um, tradition and cultural values. So it's obvious we learn a lot. And just adding up from what those two have said, I think also partners in that they just not teach us and mentors and leave us to do things by ourselves, but they still walk with us step by step to see that we grow. I, I see um, you all have this interest in art. Um, is it a natural passion for you guys or did they force it on you? <laughs> um, um, I, like for me, 
you know, they've always been, from the time we were born, they've always been like working. So you sometimes would disturb them and then you know eventually they'll give you papers. Can you also take part in, I've, I think as I grew up, I came to love art because, you know, it was already that I could express myself and I, I used to see what they do. So, you know, sometimes as we grow, we learn by imitating. So being in the environment where they have been has also nurtured that um, love for art in me. So as I grew up, it it grew as well. I've had experiences when I was, I think, maybe grade four or five, where maybe I was I'm in class, the teacher's teaching, and I won't be concentrating, but maybe busy drawing the teachers. And yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so it's something that I have grown up with, that interest in mm. yeah, childhood. You were shaking your head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not natural for you. Um, I haven't been doing art since I was young. I started after I finished my grade 12. And I never actually considered myself an artist. I used to do crafts in the same I'm not an artist. But then living in an environment where everyone is doing art, you get the interest to see what other people are doing. Oh, okay, I can do this and you try more. Do you like it? Very much. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, how how important are they uh, to you guys and how often do you get to appreciate them to appreciate your parents or do you just take it for granted um yes i, I appreciate my parents <laughs> i believe actions speak louder than words so by appreciating meaning listening obviously we have our flaws but i mean <laughs> means listening to what they tell you um appreciating their presence um, asking when you don't know, um, sometimes even telling them that you love them. Yes, sometimes I get them rose flowers. I get them and say, I love you, here's a rose flower. <laughs> and how, how do you do it? How do you appreciate your parents? I try to show it in my own ways. No, not the rose flower. <laughs> but yeah, I would say they're, they're really important in my life and especially that I've also shaped the um, um, I would say they've shaped the type of art that I do. And most of my work, I would say it's inspired from from them, so that is something that I really appreciate. Mom, at least that Lawrence, we really do love you and we appreciate everything that you do for us, really. It's a lot and we're very grateful. Okay viewers, this is where we come to the end of this particular episode of Family Affairs. We were interacting with the family of Mr. and Mrs. Yombwe, who are artists as well as marriage counselors. So many lessons drawn from the interaction and I believe we've been able to learn something from our interaction and our conversation with them. My name is Memory Buko. On behalf of my director as well as camera person Bisani Mwale and the entire production crew, we'll see you next time. Please be in there for me